This is a guy who's made money out of coal, and now he's sitting as chair of an energy committee in the Senate deciding on how we save our planet. How is that right? MSNBC's Mehdi Hassan interviewed Democratic Senator Ed Markey and asked him about Joe Manchin. So, watch here how Ed Markey dodges these questions. Now, look, Markey is, has gotten a lot better as a senator. He is not the worst person in the world. But here, I think he shows a flaw that not just him, but every Democratic senator is showing in their unwillingness to publicly challenge Manchin. So I'm going to discuss why he's doing it, because there is a good reason for why he's dodging these questions. But I'm going to discuss why I think this is no longer the strategy they should be taking. The threat from climate change is existential. It's a very serious issue. So let me ask you a very blunt question. A lot of people in America, when they're polled, they say Washington, D.C. is a corrupt place and the Senate is a dysfunctional institution. And when you look at the fact that Joe Manchin is a man who's made millions from a family coal business and now he chairs a key energy committee and decides what stuff gets into bills to protect the climate, people would say, yeah, that is dysfunctional, that is corrupt. What would you say to the American voter? Here's what I would say. I would say that the planet is running a fever and there are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to engage in the preventative care uh, that avoids the worst, most catastrophic consequences from uh, climate change. Uh, and that we're gonna work with Senator Manchin in order to get the 50th vote, in order to pass the legislation. I, I understand that, that point. I'm asking about the, the fact that how is it possible solar. someone, I, I understand, Senator, I'm asking about the fact that this is a guy who's made money out of coal, and now he's sitting as chair of an energy committee in the Senate deciding on how we save our planet. How is that right? Well, ultimately, um, he says that he wants to work to, um, to find a comprehensive energy and climate package. And so we will do that. And, uh, and out of it will come, uh, ultimately, the package, uh, which will give hope to future generations that we did respond to this crisis. That's what I'm working towards. That's what President Biden is working towards. And that's what we have to do in partnership with Senator Manchin. And I'm going to use every single day until we have that signing ceremony uh, in the Rose Garden to accomplish that goal. All right. So first here, it's good to finally see questions like this posed to lawmakers discussing the obvious corruption where you have someone like Joe Manchin, who's taken a ton of money, not even just taken money from fossil fuel companies, has a company that makes money in coal. And he chairs the uh, energy committee in the Senate. Obvious corruption there when it deals with, you know, issues of climate change. So Finally, stuff like this is being called out, at least by Mehdi Hassan, you know, the only person really in cable news calling the stuff out. But here on, on Marquis' answers. So, look, let's first get to the, the, the reason why he is unwilling to answer this question directly. Marquis feels that if he publicly denounces this, comes out and says, yes, obviously it's corrupt to have Manchin in this position. If he says this, he's afraid that it's going to offend Joe Manchin, making it harder to strike some kind of a deal. And on some level, maybe that's true. But what's also true is that they have used this hands-off approach for years. And what has it accomplished? Maybe it's time for a different strategy. Now, to be fair to Markey here, it's not on him to do this. It really is on Joe Biden to start that kind of pressure, to be the one to come out, or at the very least, privately. And maybe this has happened, but I don't think it's happened because Manchin has not moved on any of these issues. But privately, put some pressure on Manchin to say, hey, you know what, if you don't support Build Back Better or you don't support this climate initiative or whatever it is, in terms of actually helping people, then I'm going to come out and discuss your donors. I'm going to put pressure on you publicly. I'm going to maybe support a primary challenger against you. Now, would that be successful for Biden? Maybe not, but try something. <laughs> like West Virginia, of course, is a unique state where uh, even as conservative as, as Manchin is, he could very likely lose his next election because of how Republican it is. But keep in mind, Bernie Sanders won West Virginia against Hillary Clinton in 2016. So there are people there, the working class that 
simply don't like the status quo. So if they have an option to have somebody who's not status quo and maybe also a Democrat, maybe they would go with them. But those options are rarely actually, you know, given to them. The point here, though, is there has to be a different strategy. Try something else. You can't keep appeasing Joe Manchin thinking that that's going to lead to results when it has not led to results. There has to be some actual pressure points there because what what reason does Manchin have to give in to you unless you're putting pressure on him in some way? I mean, the amount of money he makes from coal, the money he takes in from these uh, from the fossil fuel industry, like he has no reason to actually operate because he is such a selfish person, does not care at all about the environment, about the climate crisis. He has no reason to do anything different unless you pressure him and threaten his career, his money in some way. And so far, we haven't seen that done. So maybe at the very least, try a different strategy.